Hello all and welcome to today's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King in the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah. For the sake of fulfilling your desire, blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us a Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence to enlighten you and may be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Shalom. That one. All right. Today's read Genesis forty one one through forty four seventeen. After two whole years, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile, and behold, there came out of the Nile seven cows, attractive and plump. And they fed in the reed grass, and behold, seven other cows, ugly and thin, came up out of the Nile after them, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile, and the ugly, thin cows ate up all the seven attractive plump cows. And the Pharaoh awoke, and he fell asleep and dreamed a second dream, and behold, seven ears of grain, plump and good, were growing on one stalk and Behold, after them sprouted seven ears, thin and blighty, by the east wind. And a thin ear swallowed up the seven plump ears, and the pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So in the morning his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for the for all the magicians, magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was none who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then a chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, I remember my offenses today. When Pharaoh was angry with his servant, and he put me in the chief baker in the chief baker in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, we dreamed on the same night, he and I, each having dreamt each having a dream with its own interpretation. A young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him he interpreted our dreams to us, giving an interpretation to each man according to his dream, and as he interpreted to us, so it came about. I was restored to my office, and the baker was hanged. Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they quickly brought him out of the pit. And when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, It is not in me. Elohim will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I was standing on the banks of the Nile. Seven cows, plump and attractive, came up out of the Nile and fed in the, in the reed grass. Seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I had never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the thin ugly cows ate up the first seven plump cows, and when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had eaten them. For they were still as ugly as in the beginning. Then I woke. I also saw in my dream seven ears growing on one stalk, full and good, seven ears withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind sprouted after them, and the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears, and I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of the Pharaoh are one. Elohim has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one. The seven lean and ugly cows that come up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blighted by the east wind are also seven years of famine. It is as I told Pharaoh, Elohim has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, but after them will arise seven years of famine. 
And all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land, and the plenty will be unknown in the land by reason of the famine that will follow. For it will be very severe. And the doubling of Pharaoh's dreams mean that the thing is fixed by Elohim. And Elohim shortly will surely bring it about. Now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint overseers over the land. And take one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years, and let them gather all the food of these good years, that are coming, and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and let them keep it. That food shall be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are to occur in the land of Egypt, so that they may not perish through the famine. The, pro the proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants, and Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this in whom is the spirit of Elohim? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since Elohim has shown you all this, there is none so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards to the throne will it be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him, and clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him ride in his second chariot, and they called out before him, Bow the knee. Thus he set him over all the land of Egypt. Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent no one shall lift a hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name. Zaphnath Paniah. And he gave him in marriage Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. So Joseph went out over the land of Egypt. Joseph was thirty years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years. The earth produced abundantly, and he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which occurred in the land of Egypt, and put the food in the cities. He puts in every city the food from the fields around it, and Joseph stored up great and stored up grain in great abundance, like the sand of the sea, until he ceased to measure it, for it could not be measured. Before the year of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph. Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, Elohim has made me forget all the hardships in all my father's house. The name of the second was called Ephraim, for Elohim had made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. The seven years of plenty that occurred in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come in Joseph, as Joseph had said. There was famine in all the lands, but in all the lands each of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, what he says to you, do. So when the famine had spread over all the land, Joseph bumped opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all the earth came to Egypt to Joseph to buy grain, because the famine was severe over all the earth. When Jacob, when Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there that we may live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Joseph did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with his brothers, for he feared that harm might happen to him. Thus the sons of Israel came to buy grain among the others who came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and he was the one who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he treated them like strangers and spoke roughly to him. 
Where do you come from, he said. They said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him, and Joseph remembered the dreams that he had dreamed of them. And he said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. They said to him, No, my lord. Your servants came. Your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants have never been spies. He said to them, No, it is in the nakedness of the land that you have come to see. And they said, We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan, and behold, the youngest is to this day with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, you are spies, but this you shall be, by this you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, let him Bring your brother, while you remain confined, that your words may be tested whether there is truth in you, or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all together in custody for three days. On the third day Joseph said to them, Do this and you will live, for I fear Elohim. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers remain confined where you are in custody, and let the rest go and carry grain for the famine of your household, and bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, In truth, we are guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the distress of his soul. When he begged us, and we did not listen, that is why his distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered him, Did I not tell you not to sin against the boy? But why did you not listen? So now there comes a reckoning for his blood. They did not know that Joseph understood them, for there is an interpreter between them. Then he turned away from them and wept, and he returned to them and spoke to them, and he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes, and Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain and to replace every man's money in his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. This was done for them. Then they loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed, and as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey fodder at the lodging place, he saw his money in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, My money has been put back. Here it is in the mouth of my sack. All their hearts failed them, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that Elohim has done to us? When they came back to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke roughly to us, and took us to be spies of the land. But we said to him, We are honest men, we have never been spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father, one is no more, but the youngest one is... And the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the land, said to us, By this I shall know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me, and take the grain for the famine of your household, and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me. Then I shall know that you are not spies, but honest men. And I will deliver your brother to you, and you shall trade in the land. As they emptied their sacks, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were afraid. And J Jacob their father said to them, You have bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more. And now you would take Benjamin. All this has come against me. Then Reuben said to his father, Kill my two sons, if I do not bring them back to you. Put them in my hands, and I will bring them back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is the only one left. If harm should happen to him on the journey that you are about that you are to make, you would bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol. Now the famine was severe in the land, and when they had eaten the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again and buy us a little food. But Judah said to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send your brother with us, we will go down and buy your food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly? And tell the man, 
that you had another brother. They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves, and our kindred saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? We've told him what we told him was an answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel's father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both you, both we and you, and also our little ones. I will be a pledge of his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry a present down to the man, a little balm and a little honey, gum, mirror, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you, carry back with you the, the money that had been returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother, and arise, go again to the man. May Elohim Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may he send you back your other brother and Benjamin, as for me, I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the men took his present, and they took double the money with them. And Benjamin, they arose, and went down to Egypt, and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house of slaughter and ammo, and make ready for the men are to dine with us at noon. The men did as Joseph had told them and brought the men to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they brought, jo they were brought to Joseph's house and they said, It is because of the money which was replaced in our sacks the first time that we are brought in, so that he may assault us and fall upon us and make us servants and seize our donkeys. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the door of the house and said, Oh my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food, and when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and there was each man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. So we had brought it again with us, and we brought other money down with us to buy food. We did not know who put the, our money in our sacks, he replied. Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your Elohim and Elohim of your father has put treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. And the man had brought the men into Joseph's house to give, and had given them water. They had washed their feet, and when he had given their donkeys fodder, they prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present that had been with them and bowed down to him on the ground, and he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well? And the old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well, he is still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother, of whom you spoke to me? Elohim be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out, for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he started a place to weep, and he entered the chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and controlling himself, he said, Serve the food. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with them, with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews. For that is an abomination to the Egyptians. They sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. Then he commanded the steward of the house, Fill the man's sacks with food as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest, with his money for the grain. And he did as Joseph told him. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. They had gone only a short distance from the city. Now Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, why have you repaid evil for good? It is it not from this that my Lord drinks, and by that he 
practices divination. You have done evil in doing this. When he overtook them, he spoke them these words. They said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants to do such a thing. Behold, the money that we found in the mouths of our sack was brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Whichever of your servants is found with it shall die, and we also will be my Lord's servants. He said, Let it be as you say. He who is found with it shall be my servant, and the rest of you shall be innocent. Then each man quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and each man opened his sack, and he, ser and he searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, and they tore their clothes, and every man looked, loaded his donkey, and they returned to the sea. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there, they fell before him to the ground, and Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? Elohim has found out the guilt of, our, of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also, in whose hand the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do, that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my servant. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Shem Yeshua. Amen.